camera a little too much. It's in our way. Oh, that's weird. There we go. Oh, that looks good. You look taller than me because it's all Because I'm closer. Because I'm closer. Perspective. What's up, everybody? All right. So we're, we're hey, let me just make sure that got tweeted real quick. I tweeted. You tweeted? Oh, I didn't retweet you. I Did retweeted you? I tweeted the YouTube. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where are you at? Oh, I just turned my phone off. I, my phone's dying. Hey, Mandy. Hey, how you doing there? What's up, everybody? I'm here for the male perspective. Yeah, and I was hoping Charnette would come on too. Because... For the male perspective? No. Oh. Because uh, we're not only lacking uh, women, we're lacking serious uh, serious lack of minorities. Not only for have we writers, had any minority but... directors and writers? Um. Well, we have James Wong. That's true. Uh, as far as right now, I think he's the only one. No African American, no Hispanic. Jillian Anderson uh, tweeted, "Hey, Bobby, uh, this morning, two out of 207 episodes directed by women." Now we're talking about the X Files. Yes. 207 episodes, two directed by women. How many episodes were written by women? I think you said there were five writers altogether, five female writers. But how many episodes? Like ten okay. episodes? Or they got so, shapes? So uh, shapes. Oh, that was one of my uh, favorites. Marilyn Osborne, uh, Aubrey. Now these are secondary writers. The Calisari. Uh, Calisari because uh, yeah, uh, Quagmire Revelations. Quagmire. Uh, Sanguinarium. Mm hmm Uh, Sigeny. All the interesting names. I thought Sigeny was a Chris Carter episode. Uh, I, I think these were all so they're co-written. This was all co-written. Yeah. And then Julian Anderson, all things. All things. Uh. And then the other, the other director was, um, there was a female director, and it was for a season, season nine episode. So this might have been one of Doggett's best episodes. He really got some good stuff in this, right? He's in Mexico. He's got amnesia. He doesn't know what's going on. It's a classic Michelle kind of. Michelle uh, McLaren. Michelle, yeah. Michelle McLaren. Yeah. She directed. Ah, from Claire McLaren. Was directed. Directed. She directed that one. Who wrote that one? Season nine episode. Season nine episode. I don't have that information for me. So there are no I, women in the new writers room. So this is the new writers room. Right. Uh, the latest batch of episode will star, you know, obviously David and Jillian. Um, and then uh, Chris, Glenn Morgan, Darren Morgan, James Wong. Why is Chris in the um, writers room? <laughs> Clay Rotter, Benjamin Van Allen, and Brad Follimer. So um, these are all assistants that they promoted up to the writing team. So I'm kind of glad. Okay, it's good news because we actually have some new writers. Fresh but blood. But it's like bad news because it's like, like assistants to the other writers. And again, none of them are female. It's a man's world. <laughs> Chris doesn't need to be in the writer's room. Uh, I don't think he does either. I'd be happy with him just... Hey, Chris. Just have direct. more speed, though. Hey, what do you have in mind here? Okay, great. We'll get back to him. Storyboard now. a little bit, you know. Uh, nothing against Chris Carter, but, like, this is... I Okay, here's my thing. If season 10 was flawless and everybody was thrilled with it and it got amazing reviews, it was criti critically acclaimed, it would have been, like, sure. I wouldn't really give that too much of a big deal. Let, it's an issue. Yeah, he needs a babysitter. That's what I said. And we need more Mitch Pileggi, which we got not Mitch much Pileggi, of. Mitch love my video. Mitch Pileggi and I are on the same page. We're like this. <laughs> we need more Mitch Pileggi. But it, uh, there are a lot of holes in season 10. It left a lot of people unhappy, and not just fans, like casual fans, casual viewers, and fans. Uh, people wanted more. Because they love the series, and we still love the series. But as fans, we can love the series and not love everything that's in the series or that happens in the series. Well, we can love the series and still have an intellectual discussion about. Yeah, we're not shortfalls. Yeah, we're not like drones just no. following, you know, and no. commanding orders. No, it was so bad, season ten. Uh, okay, so I felt like when I watched my struggle, it was good, and I then enjoyed my struggle. It went, I thought there was a serious lack of mythology issues. Like, we didn't go, yeah, it wasn't all I bad. I enjoyed Founder's Mutation and, as, like, a standalone. Yeah, and Darren's episode, everyone liked that. It like, I don't agree great. we should have standalones anymore, but they, 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 those two weren't horrible. And so, okay. Oh, Darren's episode was great. We I'm need sorry. diversity, not only in the writer's room. We need diversity in the cast. And mm -hmm. by meaning this, you don't really have, and something Charnette had pointed out, we don't really have um, many minorities Overall, well, in Darren's past, episode, you had past, an Indian man and a lizard. Yeah, okay, so and, we had and, and a New, New Zealand gentleman. Yes, we had New Zealand is Reece not counted as a minority. 
No. Uh, do you have Chris Carter cave to fan pressure to have a happy ending? No, I do not think he will cave. Uh, I think the person that would have caved would have been Frank, and Frank is not involved anymore. Um, so I think he's going to be go down with the ship uh, monster. Uh, yeah, but AVR. we generally have a lack of minorities ARV. in general in the series, in the cast. Like, there are fans, um, you know, that say, hey, I have nobody that looks like me on this screen. So, yeah, that's definitely a problem. And I think it comes from writer. Now, I, as a producer, because I produce theater, and it's a different level. It's on a much, much smaller scale. Much, much smaller scale. But we work better as a cast in a show, and it's improv, when we have a diverse show. We don't do as well if it's like five or six guys that are all kind of the same. If you have five guys, like a lot of improv groups have this, and one thing I've tried to do with separating us, be like, we're not gonna be this, because when you have five guys, five dudes that all kind of look the same, they're kind of like nerdy frat boy type wannabes, and you put them up on stage, they're gonna all make the same stupid jokes, and they're all gonna have the same humor, and it's all gonna be the same, it's gonna appeal to the same crowd. And when they play a female character, a black character, it's a Hispanic so character, an Indian character, <laughs> it's just very—it's always this two-dimensional, two yeah, make two fun of those characters. Yes. They, and more often than not, there are exceptions, more often than not, not becoming rich, interesting characters. Like, I've played female characters, African-American characters. I, I, I don't, I've tried to do Indian, it's just terrible. I'm horrible with the accent. You've played an African-American but, character. Well, no, I, I play characters that's definitely more that's urban-esque. Kind of <laughs> Well, no, no, in the sense that the characters, urban. You but an urban white boy. where I've really tried to, but I lose myself in the it's moment, though. No, no, I'm saying, uh, though, I, about yeah. representing a character, well, have, yes. not not representing, hey, look, I'm being black. No, I'm, I'm representing a character who happens to be African American. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but there's a difference. There's no. a difference when you're portraying no, you a can't, character, kind of like when all those you different can't. people played Bob Dylan. Of different uh, ethnicities. That's Bob Dylan. I mean, he's, he's a, a white, white guy. guy. <laughs> but all these different ethnicities. But they were playing a white guy. Bob Dylan. They weren't playing just he's some generic here. white guy. They're playing a character who happened to be white. He's white. It's different. You know, you're, or you're playing it's an inner different. city character. Hey, now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go out and say, hey, look at me. I'm doing. I'm leading watermelon and fried chicken. Well, oh, no. No, no. No, no. That's what I'm saying. That's, what I'm, that's not what I'm doing. I'm a character okay, we're done. We're done. that we're walks done. a certain Let's way. Let's go back to our diverse cast. Yeah. But luckily, uh, we don't have to do that a lot. I do have a very diverse character. Uh, no, I'm just saying it works better when we have all these. We have female, and yeah. we have um, someone who is like we have minorities. We have a black person in the cast, or we have several black. You know, we don't do tokenism either. We're like, okay. Uh, I, I do play the fat friend a lot. Uh, we we don't do tokenism, so it's like it's definitely better when we have like it's all mixed up different okay. people. The tripod looks like it's about to fall off the table. Okay, all right, fine. Yeah, sorry, just look now it's in the shot. Oh, it's, it's in the problem. shot. Stop uh, it. Just leave it. I had uh, it. All right, I'm just saying <laughs> you heard you gesture a lot. I'm afraid you're gonna knock no, over the camera. We have it. It's diverse for a reason. I don't want the same boring white dudes all going up there making jokes. It's much more interesting. It's a better show. But not all dudes are white. A wider are boring. A wider let me let me finish it appears appeals to a wider audience and it's funnier and it's better when you have all these different people and diverse uh, humor coming in than just like the same type of humor that's like repetitive and the same jokes and then honestly who wants to look at the same dudes and I, I, I just think a lot of people want to look at David all the time they do um, but that's a separate issue that we're talking about Ooh. they they you know it's better that way it's better to mix it up mm -hmm. and have like people that people that different people can relate to can I say, and this is going to be a little controversial, um, we need more women directing. We need more women writing. It's not controversial. It's true. But at the same time, one of the worst episodes in nine years was Jillian's episode. Oh, boy. Now that's controversial. That, and I'm saying it's a little controversial. So, but, so I think in some cases, I have nothing to say about you know, that. I don't think that's we so, need I, more I think women. There's, I, think there, I think season 10 was better than all of those. Uh, I'm sorry. Hurt. That episode would still be better than most of season 10. That episode was still better than most. I can't remember. That I was fell asleep. Definitely better. I don't than, know if I saw the end of her episode. I fell asleep twice trying to watch it. Uh, and I and I. I don't like Jillian. It's not like the Jillian. I think she's a great actress. Uh, she should get paid the not, same amount not, to perform. Okay, we're not going to touch on that. It's not where it's different feel. Um, yeah, we're not going to go. It's into a very that. different feel, and it just didn't do anything for me. And I, but I don't know. Was it like 
and I asked this to all the women watching and yourself, so you was it like, oh, this, this episode has a feminine touch. I relate to it more because a woman directed it and wrote it. No, I, I didn't. It wasn't my favorite episode. It wasn't one of my favorite episodes. You know, like if, if the... It was uh, definitely not one of my... I mean, I watched it. I enjoyed the, the shipper moments. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that part of it. But like the actual episode about the the ex-boyfriend who was married and yeah, the whole thing. It got very soapy. But you know what? Parts of season 10 got really soapy too. So, you know, you can't say, oh, we don't want soap. And then you put make it all soapy. So I thought it got too... I don't know. I felt like it was a little bit out of character for Scully, mm -hmm. like the whole ex-boyfriend that was married and he's got this heart issue and he's dying and he's not like I didn't. And then she was like, like praying in a Buddhist temple and then Mulder disappeared for most of the episode and then he came back. I like the shipper aspect of it, but that was about it. That part was good. Right. But that's besides the point. There are plenty of, uh, it's hard to say since I already know she wrote it. Yeah, yeah, that, that too. There are plenty of really well, there are, there are plenty of female writers out there. Great that, ones. That can represent. Um, and Penny Marshall's still alive, you right? Have, no, but look at uh, Shonda, um, Ra Shonda Rhimes and all of her yeah, shows and how yeah. well they do. Not only are they uh, and she's got an entire female, room you full have of female writers. extremely diverse and yeah. leading yeah. roles. Right spearheading front roles for the, these casts that are minorities. So that's really, really important. Like, you got to look at that because that, that has a huge following. You're going to sit there and watch. I mean, honestly, if, if I wasn't a diehard X-Files fan, like from the beginning, if I hadn't like watched it, if it came to like watching an episode of Scandal or watching an episode of season 10, I might actually prefer to watch Scandal at this point because uh, it's going to hold my attention. It's fast paced. And yes, it does get soapy, but uh, but the characters are very, they draw me in right away. And um, it's just very well written and well acted and well directed. So I, I think there are plenty of cap capable female writers. Um, maybe no women applied. This isn't a job that takes applications. Yeah, right. Uh, how do we apply to be a writer for the X-Files? I, I can't well, I can't write. I can only improvise. So if I to me writing is, uh, an episode for me if I went to write I'd be like, all right, well I'd come with an outline. I'd be like, this would be like a uh, curb your enthusiasm. I'd have right. an outline of this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna improvise everything. Y'all gotta come with the lines. Well part no, of the problem maybe is maybe that's that maybe I should pitch that. Maybe that should be an episode. I, part I, of I write is, an outline of what's supposed yeah. to happen and then I say each scene's gonna be improvised. And then they have to improvise. I think it'd be great. Part of the problem is I think it'd be great. It'd be an editing nightmare, but it'd be great. I don't know about season eleven, but it sounds like season ten, like from the time that they got the actual "let's do this, go ahead" to they started filming was not a lot of time. And I think there was a lot of so that was an improv episode. Right, that'd be awesome. Uh, we were still waiting for the musical episode, but uh, we put music in it. I'd, I'd, I'd make I make them sing it halfway through. I'd be like, they Mulder would be like, oh look. It's it's uh, these cows have been ex extinguished. Hire Larissa to direct an episode. And I say, sing it. And he'd be Look, like, and Larissa has the hat on. She looks like a director right now. The glasses he'd be and like, the hat. Alien abductees. You look like a female director. Thank you. Yeah, you got the glasses and the hat. I, I, I don't know how to direct, so it's not really. <laughs> I mean, I can I can direct the stage show, but I can't really but direct. I thought all, what you wanted to always to always wanted to do was to direct. <laughs> You're funny. Oh. Now you know, and part of the problem is I think you know, part of the problem Season is you know, twelve. Yes. 1990s had almost no women whatsoever, right? For for all anything really, but I mean, uh, X Files had very little female participation. <laughs> Actors right? randomly turn the camera and yell "taxi." Yeah, that's right. Yo, <laughs> taxi! Yo. Like, oh, yo! And the taxi driver yells back, "yo." Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, everyone. So when they, what well, I was saying, let me say something. I'm sorry, sorry. Go. So when they throw together an episode season last minute, as as they clearly did for season ten. You know, it's a matter of let's just get who we can get, when we can get. There's not a lot of time to say, you know, what we really need is more females in the in the room, right? I don't even know if they had a writer's room for season I, 10. I don't think it was a conscious decision to be no, like. No, 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 not at all. Well, let's not have girls. But but the problem the is. It's been. The problem is, like, people are bringing this up now after it's been done, right? And I know we've talked about it in the yeah, past they, they in the background. Last season but no all of a sudden, because it's a hot topic, everybody put out an an article the last 48 hours Planning about season this, 11, season right? 10. And, they didn't have any for season But 10. you know what? Did anybody then say, you know what you guys really need? You need some more female perspective. 
you need some more multi-ethnic perspective. Uh, now we were saying, you know, if you're going to do a, a Muslim episode, maybe you should have somebody yes, that was a Islamic big problem. Yes, in the yes. room that could tell you. We were talking about this it a is month how ago. the religion works. A month ago, we were talking about this. We were talking about yeah. the lack of minorities in leading roles. You had during the. Oh no! Well, we've talked about that had, forever. You, and you and you had um and I think a lot of that comes from the writing perspective. And um, I think Agent Miller Kirsch, should have been an African American. You had <laughs> you had Kurt. Uh, we've had Kirsch. You've had uh, Exhibit when he was in um. X. Exhibit from I Want to Believe, um, Agent Whitney. He was kind of a jerk. And then you had X. You had X. X. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're saying X. Uh, you had the female, uh, female from Dwayne Barry. Like that stands out in my head. Uh, oh, she's good. Yeah, she's really, really good. I, I cannot. But these are all kind of shadyish type characters, and I don't know if that's intentional or not. Well, the FBI not. agent wasn't shady. Yeah, that a lot was of them it. were. She was great. Yeah, but like Kirsch and X. And exhibit, but you know, so you now, feel like these people are like, oh, okay, all right, and then you have an episode like Babylon, Hell Money, yeah, like yes, Hell Money. That's true. They're 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 actually the bad. prison episode had a lot of black guys. The, um, well, no, yeah, you had you had day player roles and guest starring roles, but you don't have like a major character other than Kirsch, right? Really reoccurring, right? Kirsch and X, the homeless guy and that X, said band aid nose man. The I homeless mean, guy was black. Can't, yes, the guy that said band there's the mm. band aid mode. Okay, that's bad. Um, you don't need the that. Haitians you were have, black. Okay, you don't need. Uh, uh, part of the problem is you have these two leads in Skinner, and you don't really have that many reoccurring characters. Uh, we did have though, like you said, we had Agent Miller, on uh, Einstein, one of them. They didn't have to be Mulder and Scully clones. I did, a lot of people didn't like that in the first place. Um, so that could have changed. Uh, you also had um, the Joel McHale character, which was well cast, but uh, also it could change. You know, there, there are options for different roles. Now, to be fair, I think part of the problem is the showrunner is actually albino. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it is the whitest show on TV today, uh, reflecting its creator. <laughs> I don't know. There might be some whiter shows. I don't know, but I don't think anybody's whiter than Chris. I don't know, but <laughs> he's, he's not albino. He's not albino. He's an albino Caucasian. Oh my god. No, <laughs> and not to make fun of Chris. I'm just saying that we're not gonna. I'm not making fun of Chris so as much as maybe I am, but we're not making fun of Chris. But what I'm saying is, you know, I feel like he needs. Go ahead. Well, no, you know, it, it goes back. To, I mean, you can go back decades with oh the argument god. with. Um, what, what do you call? Oh shoot! What do you call it? Um, uh, affirmative action, right? Affirmative action. You need something along the lines of affirmative action because it the the tails are incredibly tipped, right? And you need something. You need this kind of conversation to say um, it. It's one on one level. Just the fact that you have ten white guys in the room and nobody else. Ten white men. And nobody else. There's right. an affirmative action the issue. People, but I think uh, from an art, people really, really look at it, and I think we're more talking about it this way too. But no, it's more of an artistic like, issue, reflecting the real world with the creative collective. Right. Right. And if, especially because if you're going to do episodic, fine. You're going to do episodic, but then don't do an arc at all. Just do anthology. You know what I mean? Just do FBI science fiction anthology because basically you're this close to being an anthology show that you know like uh what's that one on netflix from england right now or even like a, a twilight zone type of show you're this close to being anthology the way that abbott could sell a tv show is this much to being sketched not really a sitcom right uh seinfeld is this much this close to being a sketch show loosely collected together as a sitcom by these four characters but basically a sketch comedy show you know, you're a bait. You're it's more. A comedy show now. Well, no, X Files is more of an anthology. I mean, not even episodic, almost. You know what I mean? It's barely an episodic show. Um, you just happen to have two and a half characters mm -hmm. that you know, two and a tenth character, really. I mean, and again, we, going back, Mitch needs to be in every episode. Needs to be a major player in every episode. Um, it makes no sense to have this guy in the opening credits and out there for. No, he's, I he's, think what he he may have had five minutes of screen time in six episodes. He didn't have enough. 
I don't know. I don't, Maybe I, five I minutes. I have not rewatched. I we 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 did a bunch of podcasts for all those episodes, so I think I rewatched each one. Maybe twice. If you, but ca- I haven't if you tally it all up, it's so about five minutes. I haven't tallied minutes. it all up, but that's it. That's also another. And none issue. of them were all that exciting. That's how to make the writing a little. They bit didn't better. give him anything good. They they could have given him. A they lot said, more. "Look, Boulder, you got pencils in your ceiling. Go do something about it." All right, next. You know, you Skinner. We love Skinner. We want to see Skinner. Okay. We want to see Skinner like ha- we like the Skinner toting that line of. I have a job to do. I work for the American we government, we, we and we know elements of the American government are up to no good. So I'm going to tote that line. That's that is one of the most interesting stories that in the X Files ever had. You had Mulder was was Mulder and Scully are stagnant characters. M- Mitch Walter Skinner was the one character that changed. I mean, this. I mean, you think about it. I mean, as much as we love X Files, X Files oh. character development is not that deep. You have very, I don't want to call them two-dimensional, but there's, there's only so many roles they're going to have. But I'm saying they're very stock characters. They're almost like Commedia dell'arte as modern science well, fiction. Well, no, and you have the actors. You have the hero, the, the, the actors, princess. The actors have brought, made them a lot more, given them that. Yeah, and I'm not yes. saying their performances are two-dimensional, but, and they, what they've done is two-dimensional. But, but Mulder, topic here. How, 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 how much has Mulder changed? They, but no, no, but wrote, I'm going to turn this they around. They wrote a very iconic, strong female character. They wrote a strong female character. I will give them that. But, but it was almost like a worship She still hasn't changed thing. that much well, in Well, they did years. change her, but I feel like they didn't change her for the better. They made her a little weaker, a mm-hmm. little bit less ballsy, a little bit less badass mm-hmm. for season 10. And even in the I Want to Believe the movie, she definitely wasn't as much of a badass as what I want to see. Now, when I see Scully come back... I don't want to see her broken or beaten up. I know she's been through some shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, the whole, the way the whole relationship was handled, it was not, not, not happy with that at mm-hmm. all. We have different, we have opposing opinions on this. But damn, you're going to bring these people back, bring back what we love about them. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like they, they wrote her a little bit too, uh, you know, almost like a little bit timid. I just will say. Instead of being this badass woman, this strong, yeah, more right. deep. We need this strong you woman You know, they back give them conflict, but they don't really broken. write them conflicted. Does that make sense? They they put the conflict in the story, mom dying, uh, because they already did that with, with Mulder. So, hey, let's have somebody else's list. mom die. I still died. don't know why they did that. What was well, no, it, well, here's why. Because they don't know how to write a story where, I don't think Chris does, where the actual character is truly conflicted. Fan fics are for that, yeah. Right? Right. It's we, true. Fan fics are like Well, yeah, because they fill in the blanks. But, I mean, you that psychological uh, conflict. Where and they, they've they've written and I think when There's they only did so many blanks the actors can fill in you right. need good writing you still need right. good writing you need good story mm-hmm. uh, lines you need good arcs there has to be some type of arc in it with when you when you write something there can't be any filler episodes when you only right. have six episodes there can't be filler and the episodes twenty four episodes you can have some filler stuff you can have some right. like storylines that don't get get resolved mm-hmm. but like this uh, this season it it definitely needed improvement. And you don't to improve on that. Maybe you need to shake it up and change a little bit. Now mm-hmm. I know, like they were doing um, those promos for the Webby Awards. I think David was saying, "Oh, let's not try to fix something that's not broken." Chris is gonna write. Mm-hmm. I don't think the fans. Um, I don't think the fans should know what's best. I don't think even us as actors know what's best. I disagree. I disagree because a lo- it's not just the fans. Yeah, but I know what David's saying. You can't just it's like well. change everything because no, this fan it's because there's too many opinions out there. There is. But um yeah, co- yeah, season 10 should have been more cohesive with only six. Chris episodes. Carter, but we know in the past needed- Chris Carter has great ideas and when he did team up He's with done, David or yeah, somebody else, exactly. we had great results. Yes. The first movie was amazing. Yes. Second movie as far as I'm concerned, was fairly good enough. It wasn't. He cheated. He cheated okay. up with Frank for that. And, and again, and that. I do if like, it was, still like Frank, but I like Frank. But if that was an episode in season ten, I would have been. I would have been fine. That right. would have been a great episode in season yeah, ten. It could have been an episode. I don't. That know, was a. That was a sixty-minute episode stretched to 80, 90 budget. minutes. They had about a low budget for the movie, yeah. so it was. They, How much was the whole budget also, for season ten? And they also they were also against the writer strike. Like yeah. animal. That was a mess. Right. But um, that doesn't excuse season ten. It, no, it doesn't excuse no. season ten. And to be writing ep- uh, my struggle two episode six while filming episode five is never good. Um, that's but not one of the reasons I'm saying what happened. You need to start planning this now. They've had a right. year and a half to. Well, I'll bring it back to the original plan. Like one other female to, to submit an episode right. and say, you know, 
pitch an episode and go in and but do it. But you don't want one female. Because one female is tokenism. And one female in but the room. Well, no, no. Because you got to remember, one female Just in one. the room with 10 white guys is going to have like, you know, I mean, that even, 80s, 90s tokenism and she's going to be miserable. Even Californication had a handful of females that yeah. were on the writing team. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like. This, the, you know, I do think that's a show that I'm not being nitpicky here. I'm not being like, oh, let's everyone, some fans are getting defensive about it. There's no reason to get defensive about that's it. That's silly. It's just raising awareness of something that's saying, hey, and I, I don't know why it's made such a big deal this season and not right. like last season. Well, because somebody wrote an article and say, look, let's, pu let's push yeah, our someone, thumb on the button yeah, someone, on the scale said this and sell topic. some articles. Yeah, and right? kind of just um, And now it's got stars involved and you have Jillian right. tweeting about it and then mm -hmm. she posted something on Tumblr about it which also she hashtag David so it's got Tumblr up in a freaking mess everyone's mm -hmm. arguing with each other people yeah, started but dragging David's music of course you, of course you now. hashtag now, David uh, of course she did but they think that was like a, a shade for some no reason. you hashtag and David because like, it's about David it's about the X-Files and you get more hits on your Tumblr yes absolutely. Jillian needs more hits on her Tumblr no I don't think so but anyways, um, she did hashtag it, and but I'm saying a lot of people thought it was shade, and people got angry, and uh, there's there's as if people, you know, they it's not like we need anything extra to argue about in Tumblr or the fandom. Oh, you fans be nuts. Uh, it's really nothing. There's always going to be something. Why we're why are we about. arguing at all? This is just an issue that. Why can't we just have an intelligent discussion? This is something that's going to be on the main. <laughs> this is becoming become on the main little niche of fans. This is something that's gone out into the public. Those and some people have me, weighed folks. in. Ugh. Like I saw, stop it. I saw some people um, weigh in on uh, on Twitter saying, oh, gosh, we don't need our token. Of course, they're making an issue out of it. And these are just, these weren't fans. These are just general people being like, oh, the show, don't rip down. You know, it's it's fine the way it is. Um, these are fans that probably did not watch, or not even, these are people that did not watch season 10. Because I saw some of the, the comments on Twitter saying, we don't need girls for this. It's fine the way it is. It's a great series. I, I'm you know, not that's arguing. just a troll a being great, a shitty troll. It, 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 I'm not arguing. It, it is a great series, and it is an iconic series. It's like yeah. the third most watched series in the world. Can we do better? Yes. You can always do better. You can always do better. Um, can you? Would it benefit from having some female writers? I think it would. Would it would it benefit from having some minority writers more so than just James Wong? Yes, I think it would. Well, Chris does have what's her name? The uh, you have Ann Simon who Ann is a Simon. consultant for the science, mm -hmm. who did um, help him with. Uh, At least the scientist is a woman. The, the 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 intelligent person in the room is a woman. Yes, uh, that's no surprise. But um, <laughs> I'm all guys. for it. Uh, it's still not. She's still not a writer. So it's 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 not it's yeah, not. Yeah, neither someone, is Chris. Oh my god. He wrote a lot of he wrote a lot of good stuff. He is capable. He is capable. He is capable. I just feel like he's a. Is he lazy? And then like he's like a workaholic. No, I, think, I think he's just he, out of touch. Maybe he's. He got a little too close to his own project. It happens sometimes. Yeah. You just you lose whatever it was that was you know people change. Yeah, he was capable. It just people change, and I think his ideas are probably still there. And I still love him for creating something a series that i absolutely love and like affected my life and influenced my life so much Heck, we're watching twin peaks we're gonna watch season 11. <laughs> i mean oh my god twin peaks I, the last last sunday's episode we just watched last night and i was just i have no i still don't know what happened i don't know what i watched what did that say oh i missed what you said uh yeah i guess the atomic bomb bomb they, saw, like, uh, bomb created bomb. they actually had Easter eggs in the episode. They actually had actual Easter eggs floating. I think David just said, "You want Easter eggs? Here you go." The Easter egg, Easter Easter egg. Yeah, so they like Bob in one of the eggs. Floating. Yeah, the other eggs were just bobbing. Bob Anyways, was in one. Um, the others were just bobbing. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I do. I think it's something that can be really fixed right now by making a big stink about it. No, but I think it doesn't hurt to raise awareness about it to say, "Hey." Because it's honestly something we've been thinking for a while. Not so much about the female, but about the my diversity. Just diversification of, of human beings in the writer's room. Maybe Chris could put on a show. dress and still We wanted to have this discussion. We wanted to have this vlog like a month ago. Because we yeah. sat there and we were like, what's the problem with the writing? Like, what could improve? What could make it better? And we said, you know what would make it better if Rewrite. they had some girls? Or if they had, you know, a black writer, they probably have more black characters. Or they'd have a little bit more of like 
just a little bit more eclectic, I guess. I they are filming it in it. Canada. Uh, diversity. So probably even wider yeah. than it would be. You have a little bit. I love your diverse emojis. <laughs> um, so that ultimately, that's 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 all I have to say about it. Um, all I have to say is that's yes. All I gotta say about that. No, that's that's Get that's my, my opinion. Out. Uh, yes, yes, we we do need more writers, and I support uh, equal uh, equal salaries. Equal pay. And, Somebody wrote that I saw a tweet that said Jillian should get thirty percent more of whatever David gets. Just I'm to like, make up for the all last to things. make up for it. That's like I've that's like giving money lot. to slavery. I've seen victims a from one hundred fifty years ago. Okay, let's not go there. It's I, I um yeah, and I've seen like I said, there's a lot of people. Uh, David's music got dragged into this because apparently he's not doing much now because he's just doing music and writing books. Uh, you know, you know, on the same subject, don't, you know. Don't, don't, no, 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 don't, no, 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 no. This is good stuff. No, no, you don't know. We have no clue about it. Uh, Gal Gadot only made three hundred thousand dollars for Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure there's a backdoor deal, a uh, back end deal, not a backdoor deal, a backdoor. back end deal. Uh, yeah, the you know goal. that if this sells, you make money. You know, but we're only going to guarantee you three hundred thousand dollars up front. Mm. Um, and and it sounds like she's. You know, compared to, I think it was like 14 million that Henry Cavill made for Man of Steel. Yeah, I remember that. Now, I, what's going to happen, that. though, I, I think, that. you know, in the. And that's, that, his movie sucked. I'm what sorry. I'm saying, the new Wonder Woman movie, she will probably make a huge amount and she can command, because that, that movie sells and that movie's going to sell and everybody wants a second Wonder Woman more than anything else right now. That movie is going to get a big deal and she's going to be able to command. A small fortune as well as the director the director got shit apparently and mm -hmm. like similar money but you know yeah, by the, far the best dc director. movie yet and they don't have ever, a lot of female since, directors at least since christopher reeves movies they i don't, mean yeah they don't have even better than that maybe you know all things being equal maybe um that that first christopher reeves movie was great um second one was pretty good so uh by, but by far in four decades really in 40 years the best movie that DC Comics has put out, and but and she got shit money, and it really is a gender it's, issue. Yeah. More, it's, it's more than it's just definitely new different. actors taking a chance it's, on her. We have a lack of directors, yeah, um, for main mainstream movies mm -hmm. or even indie movies. Um, if you look every year, I don't know if there's a lack. Year, uh, a lack in the award year shows, when maybe. the Oscar nominee, uh, the Oscar nominations, Oscar nods come out, mm -hmm. everybody trends the hashtag Oscar so white. Mm -hmm. This is well, happening. just the one year. That's no, really it, it's two or three years in a row. It's oh, really? happened. Yeah. The, the, the year after that, they overcompensated everybody. No, la this year they did the same thing. Was it white again? Yeah, it was white again. Um, because they did one year where everybody's black, so everything's okay. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, no, I think it was like I, one, and it's know, important to say it's like, happened two or three years in a row, so I'm just letting you know. Well, say, we shouldn't nominate somebody just because they're black, just to be fair, right? Uh, but we need to not, but there were amazing performances, and uh, and it's it's not as much as we, no, I don't think you should nominate somebody over somebody else just because affirmative action, no, right? No, no, but, but there aren't as many but opportunities for them. So that, yeah, that's the bigger problem. That's the bigger problem. And the projects that are, the, are being offered are not right. female directed mm -hmm. or, you know, are not female roles. Right. There aren't a lot of roles for females over 35. Let's, let's face film. it. Nobody's going to do a Medea movie and get nominated. You know what I mean? Because um, well, they're just, shit movies. But there are it's amazing just, movies being made out there. Yeah, I mean, and we've had things like Selma and right. um, uh, the Beast of Donation. Like there was stuff mm -hmm. that was that was up there, but like you know, there there should be some more opportunities right. in general for females to direct films and TV shows. Right. And I I don't I, I don't know how else to say it. Like you know, Look like I said, Sean Shauna Rhimes. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Gen, new uh, black Genji. Yeah, Genji. Great. Um, Shauna Rhimes stuff is all doing great, kicking mm -hmm. ass. So. Um, that's yeah. what's her name from Fast Mo Fast Times at Ridgemont High? What's her name? I forget. I, I, a friend of mine is actually related to her. Mm, the okay. Feldmans are actually like cousins of her. Oh, okay. And uh, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's plenty of talent out there. There's plenty. It's not like and there's and, it, and but you know the money goes with who they think 
and they you'll more often than not think that this guy, this white guy, is going to deliver, right? They don't give the same female with the same story, with the same, like everything else is, everything, everything else is equal. It's just what's down there is a little different. Well, I think in this um, case. And that, that, that you know, it, it comes from a financing issue, right? There's a financing issue. There's a casting issue. Uh, there's, you know, there's plenty of stories out there. There's great stories out there. But I think in this case, it was a matter of, you know, Chris is in charge. This is his series. And he's like, well, who, who writes good, who, who writes good episodes that people like mm -hmm. that I can get back that are good writers. And these right. are, these are the, these are my guys. Well, so, well you're I also talking guys, about a reunion show, basically. Oh, don't talk so like yeah. that. My, my guys are also, yeah, like you said, the reunion show. You're going to bring back the guys these, from the 90s. These are the guys. Well, no, there's a lot that he didn't bring back. So. Well, no, but everybody who directed who, who was from the 90s. Could, who he could get. Or, or, or not directed. Uh, the writers were all from the 90s. Right. Did the writers direct their own episodes? I don't remember. I don't really pay attention to who directed season uh, 10. No, you had, you had, um. You want to were there any point. new directors? My point was that um, these are the these are his guys. These mm -hmm. are the guys that can write good episodes. His guys. His guys. Yeah. You know. So of course, I don't think he said, "Oh, well, these are my. I I don't need a girl." I don't think right. that's how it wasn't like. Right. It wasn't done that way. I think that he wrote. He you know these are um you know uh you know uh uh Darren and um. And Glenn and uh, Wong, all these guys were mm -hmm. people that wrote good episodes in the past that people liked, mm -hmm. and they were iconic episodes. So he figured out these are the guys that are available. I don't know if he ever did ask Vince uh, Gilligan. I don't know if Vince Gilligan wasn't available. A lot of people want David to write. I know David wrote and directed his own episode, obviously. Right. Um, I just don't know if um like these few. I think Chris. Chris directed. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I know Chris directed that. He directed the last one. I think he directed Founders. I think that's um, Chris. Oh no! Oh, yeah, James Wan so, directed uh, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they are. Uh, yeah, they are directing their episodes. Um, he, he oh, Darren Morgan directed his so own. They wrote, okay. Yeah, they wrote and directed their oh, own that's episodes. Interesting. Um. So maybe we need to mix this up. Because it really doesn't take much yeah, to bring in a female more director. That's even more anthology thing. Because you have Chris directing and creating and producing all these shows. I mean, you have him it's directing and writing. Recipe for disaster. Uh, unless you're David Duchovny, I wouldn't direct and write your own episode. But you know, even Vince Gilligan bounces ideas he, off of he his does. partners. He does. You know? Um, I'm sure Chris does a little bit too, but he, he admitted he was throwing episode five together during episode one, right? Or something like no, that. No, no, no. During episode, five. during episode, um, during episode five, when they were filming Babylon, and they he's were, directing that. He was directing and filming, and he's Babylon, figuring out the script for he, season he six. He was, he was, yes. So he's throwing together a script for next week while directing this week. So that's oh, yeah. a recipe so for Vince, disaster. Uh, uh, Peter, so clearly, there's uh, no Peter rewrites. Gould. Peter Gould is uh, Vince's partner on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Yeah, he's awesome. So he's awesome. Um, yeah, it's not just and like I said, we had we had for so many years we had Chris and Frank for a long time for like the better half of X Files, but then like you know Frank has got other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. He's doing other projects. I don't know if he's just not available now. I feel like he was a little bit more into the heart, like a little softer on the uh, relationship aspects mm -hmm. between Mulder and Scully. A little bit more about the sweetness, the tenderness between the two. He was much better at writing that stuff and contributing to that. As opposed to Chris, who's kind of like cold on that, and even uh, these other writers that they brought in, they're not exactly known for being shippers. If somebody you know, said, it's, "Look at Breaking Bad, look at ship, Saul," but some of it is right. Look at Breaking Bad, um, look at Saul for a second. Take a breath for a second. Look at Breaking Bad, look at Saul. <laughs> while you're doing, while you're on the subject of Vince Gilligan. No, I was talking about. Um, while you're on the subject of Vince Gilligan, those two, those episodes, those secondary characters in those shows all have very realistic stories even if they're like exaggerated for dramatic effect right it's a different series but no no no. i'm talking about the way they're written the way they're directed mm -hmm. the secondary characters right right going back to my point from before x files as much as i love it has pretty much stock characters you know they had the three clowns they have the man the woman 
the you know in each case you kind of have um, and I forget the the Camino del Arte names, but basically like the scary powerful one, right? Right. You have the fool. You have uh, all Mitch is almost like the doctor or um, you know, and it's not Camino del Arte, so it's not he's not the fool, right? But he's you know a relatively good guy, but um, but you know in that world and but but you had the three lone gunmen or like the three clowns or versions of the Harlequin, right? Um, no, not the three kings. Like, they were in the one episode. They, they called them that at one point, yeah. but um, they were in the one episode. But the point being, like, it's it's very stock existence. characters from like 200 years ago. Uh, the four, and if you look at Commedia dell'arte and how, and then almost all modern theater and filming and everything in some way comes from that. You have the king character, you have the jester character, you have everything in between. You know, the the, the prince and princess, well, the lovers, the, than... but but they're not they're not written with a lot of dimension. The actors do a lot. It's not two-dimensionally performed, but I think Chris Carter's idea of characters is much, he's much more into situation than into character, mm. right? Yeah. And I think most stories, most shows that last this long, it's because we really got into the characters. And I think because they, they got away, they really never did that. Well. Right? They got never good, because it is episodic. The episodes they never they... had this character enrichment process the way Vince does with his character right and because of that I think you're a lot of people are starting to fall off right you know and if the stories are not great and in, in other shows where the stories are and eh, like sometimes like the, it's a weak plot mm. the characters are so well developed that we we stay with it we, mm, we yeah. love it because we like the characters. the characters are so well and they're so interesting and so layered well, yeah, that's that kind of, a mediocre plot line, like even in Seinfeld, is a good example. You can have a show about Bloodlines. nothing, and we still like it. We're watching Bloodlines. Bloodlines was a shitty show, but the acting well, the and the character development in writing, yeah. it was a character show. The plot, the story was like, yeah. oh. And part of that was because it got cut off short by two short, years. Yeah. But we're we're on the edge of our seat because we're like, ah, oh, what's his name? Uh, Chandler? No, not Chandler. Kyle. Kyle. What's his last name? Is it Kyle Chandler? I think so. All right. So, Kyle, yeah, Kyle Chandler is playing John in Bloodlines. And there's just so much going on in that face, right? So much going on. He barely says anything. And then things, weird things start to happen. Like, ah, oh, what the fuck is going on? But we're still with it on the edge of our seat because it's like his performance is so good. And then it really just doesn't go anywhere. And again, the next Godzilla movie. Is he really? <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I really like his work and anything he does. I never really watch, watch Friday Night Lights, excuse me. Uh, the same thing, uh, Ben Mendelsohn, right? Ben? From, okay, we'll get too off the X-Men. No, no, what I'm saying is... No one but it, here but it's, it. And that, really they know. have the female Anyways, characters. Anyways, I was just using that really quick as, a, uh, as an example yeah. of someone's character pieces in the best one. And, and uh, people are in love with the characters right. on X Files, people right. love Mulder and Scully and their relationship and um, their rapport mm -hmm. and and who they are, and they want to see these two out together investigating bad guys and paranormal and mm -hmm. aliens and kicking some butt and maybe getting their butts kicked. What they don't want to see is them being separated almost every episode, and they didn't separate them for the first, second, even third, but around Babylon, and even most of, actually, the third episode, uh, uh, Modern Scully meet the Were Monster, they, are, they were separated for a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. So ba Babylon, and uh, th which was almost like two episodes, it became like in this weird Mulder got on a mushroom trip thing, which had nothing to do with anything. And then... Um, and then my struggle too. They were we did not see them together, and considering that might have been the last of when we saw Mulder and Scully, doesn't sit very well. Babylon reminds me of we Twin didn't. Peaks the movie, mm -hmm. like a whole lot of effing nothing. Um, yeah. So Babylon, interesting moments, horribly tied it, together. It, 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 Twin Peaks might have been better. <laughs> Twin Peaks the movie Ooh, might have been because you had that's... David Bowie. So. That one didn't have David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie didn't add anything to that uh, movie. He did, because it's David Bowie. That was the only good thing about the movie. It was good. Uh, no, it was bad. It was bad. But um, anyhow... Uh, I'm still trying to figure out this new episode. Anyhow, um, staying on topic, uh, I do feel like, you know... Um, what's up? Oh, hey, Janet. Um, 
moving forward, I think that if these guys could just give us some Mulder and Scully together, working together, spending time together on on investigating things, and not separate them, not separate them and split them apart and bring in these doppelgangers, that'd be great. Um, give us that. That's really what we need. Uh, we don't need all that. We don't need thrusting and things like that. Uh, <laughs> we don't need that. What we need our our two heroes doing what they do. That's like it. rabbits. Okay, well you're stuck on one theme. Um, you you know we need our two heroes out there, like on screen together, doing their like investigating, doing what Mulder and Scully do. That's what we need. It really doesn't matter. I mean, I think I've said this before. You could have an episode of them going to Costco together and people would watch it and love it. I mean, that could be an X file. Going yeah, to I think Walmart. part of the problem is where they going took to the, the show, they took the so story a like, certain direction with the movie and the season eight and nine. That in some ways, maybe they had to do a lot of what they did in season 10 just to justify getting them back to that place where they are investigating things, yeah. right? Um, but I, I believe if you're going to either need to do that or if you're going to take them away from that, you just have to do it better. You know, I think people would even let you separate them if you did it better. You know what I mean? What is that? Yeah, I you watch, watch m &S at Costco all day. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and the two of them, you know, or maybe just have that, that spin-off show. You have them on screen together. You have the m &S retire together. I mean, like, any episode that had them on screen together for a well, long after time. After the X-Files. You put the two on screen together. It's a and sitcom, and of them retired. You put them on screen together, and investigating stuff. Scully, razor brands on sale. You put them on screen together, investigating stuff, and that's all. Really, people they'll be happy. I mean, like ninety nine percent of the fans will be happy. Boulder, we're going vegan. You put the people. <laughs> Which I have some more time to get my point across without him interrupting manly white guy interrupting me. Um, you put them on screen together and put them in a scene together, lots of scenes together, on screen together, investigating aliens or a monster or something spooky, creepy. It really doesn't matter what the fuck it is. I like I said, it could be a trip to Costco and someone's toilet paper went missing and it'll still be really good and people will still love it and watch it and say this is awesome. Because Skinner, you gotta move out of the basement screen together. What you can't do is separate them, bring in doppelgangers, create this weird, crazy terrorism thing, have Mulder go off country line dancing, have them separated, almost kill Mulder, leave Mulder dying on a bridge with a rare alien, have her bring up their kid, Make their mom die for no reason. The mom died. Like, this is not good. This is, you're killing off characters. You're, like, breaking our hearts with making them reference their son and not even bring him to them. And, like, this is, like, not, this is sad and depressing as hell. So, like, how about this? No one has to be super happy. There can still be challenges. But, like, if we could do this without, like, completely ripping our hearts out, that'd be good. Um... Does it have to be Costco? Could it be BJ's? Definitely go to BJ's. I think they should go to BJ's. Petros. Go to BJ's. It's a whole other meaning. I'm done. Now you can talk. So it's going to be a sitcom called After the X-Files. They're married, and they found William. William's now living. You know, he's a teenager now. And Skinner, uh, Skinner, um, uh, was forced and disgraced on the FBI without his pension, so he's living in their basement apartment. So I think I read this fic. Uh, is this an actual fan fic? This is great. And uh, Reyes is like the town mayor, and uh, and and they just they just deal with everyday life, you know. And uh, they're starting like you know scout troop for their son, and uh, they're going he's a to too old to join the scouts. The PTA now. Old. Boy Scouts. He's in, he's in high school, right? He's a teenager. He's like 16, 15 right now. Is he, yeah, he's in high school. He could be a Boy Scout. Boy Scouts and, or maybe he's, he's in ROTC. He's in the marching band. He's he's okay. playing soccer, boosters club, like something, you know, uh, suburbanite crap. You know what I mean? And it's basically like Arrested Development, but with Mulder and Scully and William and Skinner 
and and everybody else and uh, I, I think it would be better than season 10. I think that'd be I'd watch that show so bad. I'd watch that show such a bad thing to say you know? I, I, I the Mulder is trying to be I, a writer with a bunch of rock 10. fans there were good parts right. but let's build on the good parts let's see what let's take a look at what he did and what could be better and let's make it good um you're just happy with it you're not even looking for great i don't have i don't make even, it good we'll be i happy. don't know the answer i just good know enough. good that enough it needs to switch it needs you need to change up a little bit because people were not happy with most of people i i was out yes i was happy to get Mulder and scully back i feel very very thankful i'm so glad and i know that david and jillian gave it your all and i thank you guys so much for coming back and we still do love the series and i still believe that maybe there's hope but I think there are always ways to make it better. Mulder, stop flushing the toilet when I'm in the shower. That that real life real life drama. That's that that right there. That would happen if they were on well water. Son, it's time to start using deodorant. Yes, Mulder and Scully talk to their. Uh, you need to use deodorant, son. son. About body You're odor. starting to stink. You're 15 now. It's been two years. I've held my I've held back, but you absolutely stink now. It is time to start using deodorant. And anybody out there, if you're 13 you years old, wearing deodorant way before that, they're past this. The ship is sailed. You, you would think so. Soon, uh, if you're Lee 13, going to be completely grown If you're a boy up. and you're 13, start using deodorant. Yeah, he's past that. I'm talking all boys, 13 years old and older, watching this. Don't come to my class, stinky. Do you have some stinky guys? No. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this up because I think he's run out of things to talk about. So he's now talking. What is that for? A little bit. Oh, okay.